did cheat and I did change the title and expanded my presentation a bit. Um, this is due to the fact that the original paper was under consideration for a special issue on South-South migration of the IMR last year and didn't quite make it. So if any of the reviewers are amongst you, thank you very much for your comments. One of the reviewers really liked the idea of the natural experiment and the other one wasn't so sure and uh, advised me to look into a more quantitative difference and difference approach. Um, I was very good in grad school to make my way around the quantitative courses. So fortunately, I found my um, man in Kambala, Cal Holloway, who's presently based in Uganda, an econo economist from the Univers University of British Columbia, who looked at visa policies in Ecuador from a quantitative um, angle. I'm going to present both of our work um, and look forward to input from the economists among us, maybe not by ripping me apart in the Q&A, but perhaps in the course of the next few days. But without <laughs> further ado, let's dive into my presentation on the utopia of a borderless world, visa policies, South-South migration, and urban crime in Ecuador. Why Ecuador? In 2008, Rafael Correa passed a policy by a quite populist verbal decree by which he abolished all visa requirements for all nations in, in the world to enter um, Ecuador for a 90-day tourist stay. Uh, he claimed that he was in the middle of a campaign to dismantle the invention of the 20th century of passports and visas. However, universal visa uh, freedom did not last very long, and um, in December 2008, visa requirements were reintroduced for Chinese citizens, and in September of 2010, visas were re reintroduced for the nationals or citizens of Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Ch um, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nepal, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Somalia. So I think for all of us as um, migration, um, well, academics working on migration, it's probably quite obvious why this is an interesting case, right? A country that actually says, come, whoever may. However, there's also some political salience to this case study. Uh, for example, Mario Zamora, the former immigration director of Costa Rica, said that Ecuador was causing the instability of all of the Americas, referring to new South-South migration from Africa and Asia. Maybe even more bluntly, Marcel Salamin, the former security advisor of the Panamanian president, claimed that Korea was a consumptive patient whose cough was infecting everyone else. These quotes do come from WikiLeaks. <laughs> I'm not quite sure whether it's okay to quote them, but here they are. And um, the mayor of Guayaquil, um, the largest city in Ecuador in 2010, demanded to reintroduce visas for the importers of crime, with which he meant citizens of Colombia, Peru, some countries in Central America, Europe, and Asia. Um, so the research questions this case really lends itself to are, are, are three. First of all, did the open doors policy really increase South-South immigration? What were, what were the aspirations and capabilities um, of South-South immigrants? And did this increase in South-South immigration really increase crime? Um, so first of all, we have to ask who, which countries were actually affected by the policies. Um, and what we found was that most OECD and, and South American countries were already exempt from visa requirements. So the policy actually only had an, had an impact or, or any significance for African Asian countries, uh, some Central American countries, countries in the Caribbean, and Suriname, um, Guyana, and French Guyana. Um, a few words on this methodological question. What I did in, in my original version of the paper, I claimed that this was a unique natural experiment. I really dived into explaining um, the determinants of policy change in order to, sh to show that um, the source of, of variation um, of the visa policy was exogenous to changing immigration flows. So to, to explain this a little bit more, it would have been a problem if, let's say, there suddenly was a huge demand for labor in Ecuador with wages shooting up, um, immigrants obviously wanting to, do, to go to Ecuador, and policymakers at the same time liberalizing immigration and access visa policies in order to attract them. Then it would have been hard to, to show any cause, causal um, impact of the policy on immigration flows. So, so what I did, I claimed that one could um, apply a, a comparative interrupted time series design um, with a partial reversal of the initial treatment 
basically the treatment being first the policy liberalization and the reversal of the treatment being the reintroduction of visa policies. I then claim that Peru was a comparable or an adequate comparable control group um, thinking about um, differential spatial affinity and access variables and claiming that these were comparably or sufficiently similar to Ecuador for potential immigrants from Asia and Africa. The difference in difference design, however, would be a different approach. It would rely on the assumption of parallel, parallel trends and then compare immigrant flows from restricted and unrestricted countries before and after the policy change. And I hope it will become clearer in, with the follow, following um, slides of, of graphs. Um, a word on data. I used um, net flows, so I looked at entries minus exits, whereas Carl will see in a minute uh, only look at inflows. Um, maybe to show you a few uh, the most um, important cases when we look at numbers, China from 2007 to 2008 net migration went up from only 359 to over 7,000 immigrants, so again that's entries minus exits. Uh, Cuba from minus 33 through over, over a 1,000 and then another interesting thing we see when we just look at the numbers is that in some countries net immigration went up immediately and in other countries such as um, Eritrea for example 2008 there was still zero and then 2009 there were 230. When we think about the political impact we can maybe also see that these numbers yeah they, they uh, there's an exponen exponential increase but still these numbers are relatively small. Um, what I did then, I, I, I had a look again at the, at the net migration flows before and after the policy change and before and after the reintroduction of visas. These are Chinese, migra uh, Chinese immigration that went up immediately from June to July 2008 to over, almost, <coughs> between 200, almost 2,500 immigrants per month. And again, these are entries minus exits, so the, the people that stayed. Um, when comparing the net migration flows to Ecuador and Peru, here we have Asian migration. These are Chinese, the, the huge inflow of, of Chinese net migration, then the reversal impact of the reintroduction of visas. But what we see is that other Asian immigrants didn't leave. Whereas in Peru, we seem to see more of a cyclical, seasonal influx and outflow of, of immigrants from Asia. The same thing for Africa. Um, lower in numbers and it took a little bit longer for the increase of, of net migration to pick up. But again, to Ecuador, no one left until after the reintroduction of visas, whereas in Peru, we sort of see an in and out flow. Um, very briefly on the difference in difference um, design. Um, again, Kyle only used immigration flows and excluded all um, previously non-restricted, so all the countries that didn't need visa requirements before, that did come into the country and get a transit or tourist visa. Thereby implying, and I think it's a little bit problematic that, or not, that all of this, um, the South-South immigrants that entered were immigrants, whether they entered with a tourist visa or not. But again, what we see is after the policy change, um, the, the significant increase of immigration from previously restricted countries. Um, I think I'll skip this and not go into the um, formal model. Um, just pointing out the result of Kyle's work is that Ecuador's policy of open doors led um, to a 28 to 30 percent average increase of monthly migration from previously restricted countries, that mostly being countries in Africa, Asia, and Central America and the Caribbean. I'll leave it here because I would like to come to um, aspirations and capabilities and I'm already a little bit short of time. Um, in theory, what, what, what I came up with is basically 12 possible options. People that come to, to, to Ecuador either to only stay 90 days, which was what the, what the law allowed, or to overstay those 90 days, either for the sake of tourism, irregular stay in work, obtaining a residence status either within the 90 days or afterwards, criminal activities which was claimed by politicians in Ecuador and abroad, irregular transmigration to other destinations, mainly the United States and Canada, or forced migration 
um, asylum seekers that, that really saw an opportunity to get out of their countries and seek refuge in Ecuador. Um, when we look at the characteristics of immigrants from previously restricted countries, we see that the average GDP per capita in Ecuador is actually lower and inequality is larger. So without any quantitative no knowledge, we might think, oh, probably no one will stay. Why would they stay, right? If we think about economic pull factors, those are certainly not attractive in Ecuador. We then had a look at abandoned asylum applications, and yeah, definitely, if we, if we think about 85% of the trains that abandon their asylum applications, it might very well be that they only used Ecuador as a gateway to the Americas, um, perhaps made asylum claims to uh, temporarily legalize their stay and then move on. However, my, my quantitative research, and I interviewed roughly 60 um, immigrants um, from Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean, revealed that yes, irregular transmigration is a big motivation, maybe the main motivation, but a lot of people end up staying and working illegally in the country. Right now in Ecuador, there are basically for these South South migrants no means of, um, of obtaining legal residence, which is a huge problem, especially for the roughly 10,000 Cubans that are stuck in Quito, cannot return to Ecuador because they've been out of, to, to Cuba because they've been out of Cuba for more than a year and cannot regular, reg regularize their stay. Um, the, the quantitative research was very interesting. And you know, we think about capabilities, there, there is huge variation. Um, I'm running out of time, so just, just a, few, um, a few examples. I was really struck by the Nigerian community that was highly educated. I interviewed um, only 20 Nigerians, 12 out of, out of which um, had a, a college education and, and further five had completed high school. I did not use snowball sampling. I did go to different sites and try to, to really find uh, my interviewees in, in, in different locations. Um, Cubans, for them, Ecuador really was the possibility to leave Cuba, right? So it was, it was, it was more the possibility to leave than necessarily the, the attractiveness of, of Ecuador. Once they got to Ecuador, they felt that um, they actually wanted to stay, they wanted to work, they wanted to make a living there because they found that it was very difficult to, to get the to the United States, which was their original motivation. Um, Haitians, Haitians were by far the most vulnerable group. Um, almost all of them victim of, of human trafficking. Um, people that asked where they could take the bridge or the bus to France. Now, I don't know whether they meant France or French Guiana. But what I'm trying to get at in, in, in the little time I have is that we really, the, the, the quantitative um, material is really interesting and important to give us the big picture, but then we need to dive in and look at the, at the individual migrant stories. And what I, what I did find is that perhaps there are some patterns when it comes to different countries, uh, but huge variation when it comes um, to, to aspirations and um, especially capabilities and agency of these South-South migrants. Um, did this new immigration increase crime in Ecuador? Um, well, I think the, the, the data really shows that the number of reported, reported property crimes, for example, actually went down in that, in that period, at least um, till 2010. And what we see here, this was a change in the panel code, which for, for, for some time, due to an administrative backlog, basically lowered the bar of what was, no, increased the bar of what was con considered a property crime, and then that was reversed in 2010, um, which is part of the reason why we see an increase in crime again. Um, violent crime, which includes rape, um, hom homicide, and, and the like, went up in, in, in Guayaquil, which might be um, one of the reasons why the mayor was so outspoken in, in, in wanting to reintroduce visas, um, but also went down for, for uh, Quito, at least in the time period where the where the bar in, in, the, in the panel code was, was raised. Fortunately, I'm running out of time and <laughs> cannot explain the, the, the model well, and I think we also have to rework this, but what Carl claims is that, that actually um, the New South South immigration was associated with a 2.2 to 2.4 increase of property crime, so, so theft, but a 4.8 to 5.1 decrease in violent crime something we have to look in further and something that maybe is not that easy to, to explain, but maybe we can, we can dive into that in our discussion. Policy reactions and conclusions. 
Um, as I pointed out in my introduction, um, policy reactions both domestically and internationally were quite severe and demanded the reversal of this policy. Um, in a different paper that made it through the IMR peer review and is coming out um, shortly with Diego Acosta, I have a closer look at the determinants of this policy change. Um, I think what the case really shows is the, the, two, well, the, the importance of access policies that we really have to think about something that I think Hein phrased as global opportunity structures, um, taking into consideration both aspirations and capabilities of migrants and then seeing how, how policy and, and both the, the policies of northern and southern countries determine where people see opportunities and, and move. So thank you. That's